In this video, we're going to talk about how you add your products into Google Merchant Center. If you want to run shopping campaigns, or even if you just want to list your products on Google's free shopping listings, you need to add those products into Merchant Center first. And this video is going to walk you through all the different ways that you can do that. So to start with, we're just in a, in a, a blank Merchant Center here. The most recent update that they've made inside Merchant Center is the ability to allow you to add a single product directly within Google Merchant Center. So if you have a small number of products, um, this could be an option for you. Obviously, you have to take the time to add all the information as you when you first do it. And you'll, it's your responsibility then, obviously, to keep that information up to date. But if your product range is small, it doesn't change very much and you don't have to worry too much about keeping sort of on top of stock levels so that you make sure that all your products are sort of in stock when they are in stock and out of stock when they are out of stock, then this is a great option for you. It's really, really simple. It's just a case of following the prompts. So you click on add a product and then it's it's just showing you all the information. So the basic information that it shows you here is essentially, well, it's the required information that you're going to need for most products that you upload. So it'd be things like a, a title, a description, an image, a link, price, all that kind of thing. Um, and every single section also has an option to go from basic to advanced. And we'll move that down the list here as we go. So the first thing that you will be asked is if the product has an identifier. Now what Google, uh, by the way, the, the little help, the help question marks, are you really useful in all of this if you're ever not sure of anything? So the what Google means by an, ident I, by an identifier is a GTIN, which most of us will know as, as a barcode number, an MPN, which is a manufacturer's part number, or some people call that, we'll call that a SKU, and a brand. So if you have any of these, I, these um, values available for your products, then you'll want to keep this box checked. If, you, if your product is a custom product to you, that you, where you wouldn't have a barcode, because it's, you know, you're not, it's not a product you're buying in, so it doesn't have a bar, barcode, then you can uncheck this box and Google will recognize that as a custom product where those identifiers are not going to be required. So check as appropriate for you. If you um, want to add multiple identifiers, you can just keep adding them here. If you want to swap to the advanced version, then you can enter a part number, a manufacturer's part number. And then it's just a case of, as I say, moving down and adding all the information that you have. So the ones that are have the asterisk are going to be required information for you. And um, so the ID or the SKU, now I mentioned some people refer to the part number as the SKU. The ID has to be unique for every product inside Merchant Center, because this is obviously the ID that Google recognizes to identify that particular product. So your IDs must be unique, as must your SKUs, if you're using SKUs here. So we just enter our ID, an ID. If you don't have a SKU, you can literally just start at one and then move one, two, three, four, five. That's as simple as that. Um, and as it says here, if you leave it empty, it will be auto assigned for you. We add our title, a brand, our product description, um, the link to the product page. Obviously, this needs to be the product page, not a category page or something like that. You will need to put a link to the image or you can actually upload an image as well. OK, if you click on advanced, then you just get some additional options. You get to put um, a, a separate mobile link if you've got a mobile only landing page, you can add that. And you can add additional images. I do recommend if you have multiple images for a product that you add as many as you can and give Google as much information about your products as possible. Um, you go on to add um, price and availability. Again, always check the advanced options, see if that's relevant to you. It might not be. 
in this particular one you have three options so you'll have in stock um actually you've got more than th three options these days in stock out of stock pre-order and back order and if you choose back order or pre-order then you have to set um, an availability date okay so on the basic option you would just put have to put in stock or out of stock really because if you want to do um, pre-order then you do have to um, add a date in okay so you then get to put your condition whether you have variants you can add your var product variants if you've got different sizes and colors add as much information here as you can of course again the advanced option allows you to add specific more specific details about your product i would recommend that you add as much as possible as much detail as possible here to give google the necessary data to sh know when to show your products so you'll set up delivery you can set up delivery inside merchant center if you click this link it will take you to the delivery um, area in merchant center if you um, want to set up different delivery um, options for individual products then you can do that here as well there's some additional information here where you can add custom labels and promotion IDs and I would highly recommend it's tucked away at the bottom here I would highly recommend that you assign a product type to your products because that's quite a, a, a good signal to Google um, to understand how your products are categorized if you click on the um, help button here it's really useful um, so it says to separate multiple levels with that little right hand pointy bracket thing um, and so as an example it would be home women dresses maxi dresses so it's a way of categorizing your products to help google understand what exactly they are and how they fit into your um, sort of product categories on your website and that's pretty much it and then you would just hit save and then you have your product that product and then you would just repeat the process for each product in your inventory so as you can see that's a little it's going to be a little bit time consuming so you're only going to want to do that if you have a few products if you have multiple products then obviously you can upload products in bulk so if you click on see all methods then that takes you to the next step let me change our destinations and here are the main ways that probably that we are familiar with already of uploading your product information so you can create a google sheet and um google will provide you a template if you click if you click that option you will be um let's go and show you there we go it will ask you do you have an existing google sheet that you want to select or do you want to create a new google sheet from a template um, and it, obviously if you choose that option it will create the template for you and then you can go on and add all the product information into your google sheet that's that there's a whole separate video for how to do that because obviously it, it can be quite involved if you have a lot of products and variants and that kind of thing another option is that you can host a file actually on your website that you can tell google to go and fetch on a regular basis usually kind of daily is what most people would do in this situation and so this usually applies to websites where there will be an inbuilt feature to create a product feed as usually as an xml file and then you can just set that up and it will go and fetch the data every day to make sure that that data is kept up to date you can also upload a file now the um you can sort of do this manually or again you can use an ftp service to regularly upload that file into google merchant center if you're doing a manual upload of a file from your say your pc or something like that you have it's your responsibility to go and make sure that you upload that on a regular basis otherwise your products will expire after 30 days 
It's also your responsibility, obviously, to make sure that file is kept up to date with stock levels, prices, that kind of thing. Manage data management feed platforms will often use this method where the, the, the platform will create the feed and push it to Google Merchant Center, as opposed to the scheduled fetch is where Google pulls the data in. OK, so those are the two different. That's the difference, really, essentially between these two. Another new option that we have available, available to us now is a website crawl. So this is where we can basically just send Google. You will have at this stage, you will have claimed and verified your merchant, your website address inside Merchant Center. And so you will just literally say to, to Google, go away, crawl my website and pull that data back into Merchant Center. You can then review it um, and verify that everything has pulled through OK. Um, but that's, again, a very, very simple way. We don't have to faff about trying to create a feed or knowing what the URL is for your feed on your website. Um, and then Google will um, keep, should keep that information up to date based on your the information that's on your website. Less control over that one, obviously. You're just you're hoping that Google can can crawl your products um, effectively and efficiently um, to then show them in in your Google Shopping ads. The last option you have here is the Content API. So what the Content API um, does it is it allows you to um, if you say here automatically upload product listings so that your products are easily discovered through shopping ads. What the content API, what if you think about this, this is the plugins that you have on Word, Word on WooCommerce will use the content API very often. Um, and the Shopify Google Shopping app that uses the content API. So it's a it's a system that just talks that that communicates between your website and Google Merchant Center to keep that product information up to date and current so that you can obviously have accurate shopping ads and shopping listings. OK, so there are multiple ways here, as you can see, there are multiple ways to upload your products into Merchant Center. I would recommend um, for most people, the easiest, if you have a Shopify store, the easiest way to do it is using a an app. If you have a WooCommerce website, probably one of the easiest ways is to use either the WooCommerce feed um, product feed plugin that's part of WooCommerce, or there are other paid plugins that you can use for WooCommerce as well. But certainly if you have a small product range that doesn't change very much and you just want to get something going really, really, you know, simply and quickly, then either choose the manual edition of each product or, as I say, you can get Google to actually crawl your website for you using this website crawl option and then review the product information that comes in. But that's all, those are all the options of how to add your products to Google Merchant Center. Once they're all in Merchant Center, it usually takes three to five days for them to be approved. They'll all go into pending, pending status. And then once they're active, you can then run your Google Shopping ads or with a bit of luck, get some traffic from the free listings.